Have you ever been in a situation ship? Well, some of y'all might be in one right now, but essentially a situation ship is an undefined romantic situation where there isn't typically some form of formal commitment. Now look, if you uncertain about if you're dating, if you're in a relationship, what you're doing, what the title is or a lack thereof, and there's just all of this gray area, you're gonna wanna keep watching because I am going to break down five ways to avoid a situation ship so we can get you out of this mess. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now, I'm not here to judge because I think we've probably all been in a dating or romantic situation where we just really didn't know what was going on. We may have been dating, but we wasn't technically in a relationship and we're spending all this time together and we're enjoying each other's company, but it's just undefined and it's just lacking commitment and it's just kind of that weird, awkward gray space. If that's you, don't fret, don't worry. I am perfectly sure that you are not the only one. Actually, put it in the comment section. If you are watching this and you have ever been in a situationship, <laughs> I want you to type yes or no in the comment section so I can know who I'm talking to and help the people who are feeling like they are alone in this situation because I know it's more people than not. So the things that I'm going to give you right now, it isn't some numerical sequential order that I want you to do these things in, but I do need for you to do these because if you do not, you're going to consistently stay in this situation ship and then you're going to be confused. The person you're in a, this situation ship is also going to be confused. Y'all not going to know what y'all doing, where y'all going, none of the thing. And this also is going to prevent you from getting into situation ships in the future because you're going to have the skill set and you're going to be able to apply what I'm about to tell you into the future situations. And so you won't have to deal with this foolery with nobody else. And if they try it, they know what to do. You can chuck up the deuces and be like, oh no, I'm not getting myself into another situation again. So the first one is to clearly define your intentions. Anytime that you are getting into a relationship and just maybe a new dating situation or just meeting someone new and trying to get to know them, you need to be crystal clear on your own intentions. What are you trying to do this phase in this season of your life? And also particularly with that person, if you know you're not in to anything serious. You just want a one night stand. You just want to have a little fun. You don't want commitment. Okay, cool. You know that about yourself and you need to be woman or man enough to talk about that and state those things also to the person that's involved. So what you need to do is you need to communicate as openly and as honestly about this as early as possible. Don't be six, nine, 10 months into the situation. And now you're like, oh yeah, by the way, I never want to get into a relationship ever again. I never want to get married. I just want to have sex indefinitely and with no attachment. Don't do that to people, okay? Don't do that to yourself and don't do that to other people. And I know that this is a little scary because you're like, dang, I really like this person. I don't know where it's going. It could develop into something. I don't want to run this person away. But at the end of the day, if this person is not a good fit for you, we're wasting each other's time to begin with. And so it's important to have this conversation about intentions, about desires, about commitment, about what you're looking for as early on. Now, I'm not saying you got to do it on the first date or whatever, but it needs to happen as early as possible. I do feel like you should be on the same page and align, especially in this area, because if you do want commitment and you do want marriage, you do want a relationship long term, I can guarantee you only want to date and entertain people who are on that same level with you. Nothing else will do. The second way to avoid a situation ship is to observe consistency. Now, one thing that I know for sure is that when somebody for real, for real likes you and they're interested in you, they're going to show it. So it is your responsibility to observe behavior. So essentially what that means is like I've always said before, words and actions have to align. Okay. They could be telling you all of the wonderful things and the good things and the right things that you want to hear. But if their actions are not matching up with that, then there's no congruence. Then what are we talking about here? So I like to observe people's behavior. I'm talking about everything from how they text, when they text, 
when they planning dates, if they planning dates, who they introducing me to, who they not introducing me to, the time of day that we talk and video chat. And I'm observing all of these things because it's important for me to understand and know your pattern. Because if you slack off, <laughs> if you start doing something a little bit off, I'm going to be like, hold on, you used to do that in the beginning. Like, what's the shift in the change here? But I don't think some people intentionally think about others behavior in that aspect and that's probably doing themselves a disservice so just pay a little bit more attention to the person's behavior of what they're doing and also what they're not doing the third way to avoid a situationship is to take your time i don't know why we live in this culture where we feel like once we get out of a relationship, we got to hop into the next one and we got to fill that void and we don't want to be alone and we don't want to be by ourselves because that's weird and that's awkward and I have to actually really deal with myself and self-reflect. Stop hopping from relationship to relationship. When you get out of something, even if it wasn't a full-blown relationship, even if it was a dating situation, a romantic interest, a situation, chip, <laughs> you need time. You need a little bit of space in between you entertaining someone else in order for this to really work take it slow don't be in a rush i can guarantee okay that the more you rush the more you get emotionally attached to someone too quickly and you haven't weed out and you have not done your due diligence and figuring out if this person is someone that's even supposed to be in your life you gonna get yourself into some trouble i.e. the situation ship that we're talking about, but enjoy the time with getting to know them. I'm not saying you got to go at a turtle snail pace, but I'm also not saying that you got to rush and feel like you have to do all of the things within a small and certain amount of time. It's like, what are we rushing to? If the other person is aligned and on the same page with you, you won't have to rush a doggone thing. Things are going to go at the space and the pace that it's going to go at, and you're going to be comfortable with that. Now, if you're trying to speed up and go fast, and the other person is going slow and they way back here, that's already a mismatch. So we need to get crystal clear on why it's important to take our time when getting to know someone fresh and new. And also when we're getting out of something, we know that we don't have to hop right into something else either. Especially if you're not working through your stuff, you're unhealed, you got some trauma, you got some issues that happened in the previous relationship. Don't rush. Take it slow. Like John Legend said, Take it slow, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this time we'll take it slow. <laughs> the fourth way that you can avoid a situation ship is to look for availability. And when I'm talking about availability, I'm not specifically talking about, oh, are you available to go on a date or are you available to talk on the phone? I'm also talking about emotional availability. We don't talk about this enough. I'm talking about someone who is creating and making time and space in their thoughts and in their feelings and being vulnerable and being open and being honest and being communicative with you. Because it's cute to be able to go on dates. It's cute to be able to spend money on each other. It's cute to be able to, you know, FaceTime and video chat and all of that. But what are we doing inside of that context? If you're not being open and honest and vulnerable on this date, what are we doing? If we're having video chats every other day and we're texting and we're not getting anywhere, what are we doing? Like, what is the point if we're not going deeper with each meaningful conversation? So I need for you to assess and to make sure that this person is available, that they're creating space for you inside of their life. And I think that that is one of the dopest things that a person can do is to create space for you, right? If they're always busy, if they never can pick up your phone calls, if they never can text back, if they're never planning dates, if they're never doing any of those things, that means they're not creating space for you. That also means they probably don't like you or it just means they don't know how to create space for you because they may live a very different or and or busy lifestyle and they don't have the tool set or the skill set to be able to incorporate a romantic interest in that manner. And even if that is the case, I will hope that person is open and honest enough about that and say, hey, I'm just super ambitious. I'm super busy. I got 99 businesses. I'm tired. I got a lot on my plate. I haven't dated in a while. I'm not sure how to incorporate this. So give me a little grace. Even that's okay. But if it's just straight up, ain't no availability, ain't no nothing. <laughs> we need to we need to reevaluate the situation quickly. And the fifth and the final way on how to avoid a situationship is to trust your instincts and your gut. It's all up in here, your gut, your instincts, your spirit. Um, for me, it's the Holy Spirit. Like do, figuring out what it is internally that you can tap into 
is important because when something feels off internally, especially if you're a woman, like we have this amazing gift. Men got it too, but I just feel like they're just not as tapped in as women are. But if you are feeling like something is off internally with you, that you're feeling like, oh, I don't know, something don't feel right. It's When I'm around this person, it's not giving what it needs to give. Don't run from that. Don't suppress it. Don't push it to the side and be like, well, maybe I'm just tripping. No, 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 no. That's an indicator that something's off. That's something that you need to explore at the very least and say, okay, when I'm around this person, what something's off, like figure out what that thing is, because especially if this is going on in the early stages of dating and getting to know, maybe God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> maybe God is trying to be like, yo, you really don't even need to be dating this person, let alone thinking about a relationship or a marriage with them. And so I think that that's a scary place for a lot of people to be in, because especially if we're kind of vibing out and liking somebody and then we feel uneasy and it isn't just like a nervousness, right? Like we're around someone new and we're like, oh, I kind of like them like that butterfly in your stomach. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, something is off. You know that it's not settled with you. You know that it's like, oh, yeah, no, we've all been in places, situations and around people where something just didn't feel right. You couldn't explain it. You couldn't put it into words. But you knew that was like, yeah, something ain't right. I got to go. <laughs> if you've ever felt anything like that around this person, I would absolutely trust that and explore what that is. And if that means you have to let this person go because it ain't gelling well with your spirit, then you <laughs> let them go. So here's my final thoughts on this. I think avoiding situationships is much easier than we think it is. I know that the dating pool is a little tricky for a lot of people these days, and it's hard trying to figure out and to find your person, so to speak. And so I'm just here to encourage you to do your own work. I think it's important for you to do your work because when you are dating and operating from a healed place or a healing or mostly healed place, you can easily discern when something is not for you, when somebody is not for you, when the red flags about them not creating space and time and their behavior and all of the things that we talked about in this video, when those things are off, you're easily able to be like, okay, well, it's okay. He don't like me like that. She don't like me like that. It's fine. I'm moving on. I'm doing something different. I'm going to go a different direction. And I think because we especially if you've been single for a long time and you desire a commitment, a relationship, or even marriage, sometimes you kind of just take what comes your way. And I don't want you to do that, sis, because sometimes what comes your way is not a good fit. Sometimes what comes your way is a little raggedy. Sometimes the things and the people that come your way are not even supposed to come your way, okay? It's not even sent from God, it's sent from somebody else. So we have to be aware and really tap into making sure we do our own work so we can attract the person that we're supposed to be with y'all like stop being with people for the sake of being lonely and because your biological clock and because society said and because you this and because so stop doing that because you're creating a space where you are just going to get into something you're going to settle and it's going to make you unhappy and we don't want that for you so prioritize your own well-being and that will help you to prevent yourself from getting into situations that you're not supposed to be in, especially if you're getting into them out of desperation. Now, if you just happenstance got into something and this is your first time where you're like, this is weird. I don't even know what we're doing right now. Listen, at the very least, you need to have a conversation with this person. What are you doing, sir? What are you doing, ma'am? <laughs> This is my intentions. Are those things aligned? Are they gelled? Are they matching? If not, we need to make a decision to part way. I don't need for you to keep me from the person that I'm supposed to be with. And I don't want to keep you from the person you're supposed to be with either. So thank you so much for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.